I have an uncle on Maui who can't see or walk very well, so I've been there about seven times in the past 13 years to help him out. I thought I'd make this video to share some helpful tips for people who are going to Hawaii for the first time. This video does not include every possible restaurant or beach to go to. I'm sure viewers are going to look in the comments below for any other tips, so feel free to write any of your recommendations. I'll be the first to admit that my voice is really boring, but my mom was voted class clown and class wit in high school, so I do have a sense of humor, although I'm very reserved. So I did add some of my humor to this video that will hopefully liven it up for you, and I honestly do think that I do have some good overall tips for people who are going to visit for the first time. As you land on Maui, you'll see Molokini, which is a place that is very popular for snorkeling. To the left is Wailea and also Kihei. Maui has had a drought for the past few years, so you might see some areas that are more brown than green. Once you arrive at the Kahului Airport, just follow signs for baggage claim or ground transportation, just like any other airport. Again, here's a sign for baggage claim, so bear to the right. On my latest trip, I went to Oahu for a few days, and then I came to Maui. At this check-in area, I only had to show my ID as well as my boarding pass indicating I came inter-island from Oahu. Just follow the signs for baggage claim and ground transportation. I've never taken a shuttle to one of the large hotels, but I believe that Roberts, Hawaii is something that you may want to look into to get to the Kanapali area. If you rented a car, you just want to cross the street and bear left. A few years ago, the Maui airport built a new car rental area with a tram. So you just want to cross the street and bear left to the tram, or you can walk, it's just a few minutes. But the tram comes very frequently. Once you get off the tram, just look for the car rental agency you rented from. When your visit is over, you'll just come back to this tram and go back to the airport. After you check in at your car rental company, either go to Floor 1 for Avis, Budget, or Payless, or Floor 2 for Hertz, Dollar, or Thrifty. There are plenty of signs showing where to go and which area to go based on your car type. Based on my car rental category, I chose whichever color I wanted and there was a key inside the car, but you have to stop at an exit booth to show your ID and to finish the process. The exit is also fairly simple, just go to the end and go down the ramp. As you exit the airport, bear right and just go down this long road towards Hana Highway. This sign points in the directions of Kihei, Lahaina, or Haleakala and Hana. Excuse my Hawaiian pronunciations. Some people pronounce the W as a V, so instead of Hawaii, they pronounce it Hawaii. For people who rented an Airbnb or do not want to spend a lot of money on food, there is a Costco very close to the airport if you have a membership. Krispy Kreme is on the left if you want to ruin your bikini body even before you get to the beach. To get to either Kanapali or Lahaina, there are two different ways to go. One is if you go north through Wailuku, or you can go more direct on 380 from the airport. What I'm about to show you is from the Wailuku area. That's Mount Haleakala. This area is the harbor if you're going to go snorkeling or out on a boat. Don't ask me how to pronounce it. This is the road to Lahaina and Kanapali, and it has a lot of twists and turns, so make sure you pay attention, unlike me. That's Kihei and Molokini. There's a scenic lookout here if you want to pull over, just be careful with oncoming traffic. Here are a few important tips. The most important thing to do on any Hawaiian island is to respect the locals, nature, and animals. I'm not saying that all locals hate visitors, but you have to realize that some of them do, and acting like a clown who just escaped from Ringling Brothers Circus isn't going to help. You have to respect the animals also. I once saw some guy underwater at Black Rock at Kanapali. Turtles don't like to be pet by frat bros or insta hoes, so back off. Here's a quick definition of two of the most common Hawaiian words you'll hear. Aloha. And mahalo.
A lot of restaurants, food trucks, and stores only accept cash, so don't think you can just be like, do you have Apple Pay? Something to be aware of is a brown water advisory. This happens after a lot of rain, so if it looks dirty, I would suggest not going in. In addition to it being possibly contaminated, if you can't see through brown water, then sharks can't either, so they might bite your leg, and then it will be a red water advisory. There are a decent number of shark attacks, and sometimes they do lead to death, so be careful. Hawaii has a ban on certain type of sunscreens, so make sure you only buy the proper kind. If you're a pothead who wants to smoke in Hawaii, go to health.hawaii.gov to read the rules. Recreational pot is illegal in Hawaii. For people who have trouble walking or who might have a relative who needs help, I found this company, Gammy Home Care. They have a beach wheelchair that can also go in the water that you can rent by the day or the week. There are few rules when it comes to driving on Hawaii. Basically, it's just to be polite and let people go ahead of you. And do not honk. Quite a few of the locals don't have cars, so they either use a motorcycle, moped, or bicycle. There seems to be a frequent number of accidents involving mopeds and motorcycles, so be careful when you're driving. Be aware at night that there might be people riding mopeds on the shoulder of the road. When somebody puts these flowers over your neck, don't say, I just got laid, because you're not going to. I look like I need to get laid in that picture. On Maui, I noticed that there are wild chickens and roosters in practically every parking lot. One time I was in the drive through at Kentucky Fried Chicken and I saw a chicken running away and I was like, Ron, are you going to turn it to a number three meal deal? Before your trip, I suggest checking out and bookmarking the website MauiNow.com. They have a lot of local news and might have some stuff that might be relevant to you in your trip. Hawaii in general is very windy, so be careful when you put a selfie stick up against a car because it's going to fall over. If you're going in between two different islands, Hawaiian Airlines is the best option and they have tons of flights between Maui and Oahu. I'm fortunate that I have relatives on both Maui and Oahu, so I get to sleep for free on their floors. However, I have stayed at a few places. A few years ago through Expedia, I booked a condo at Sugar Beach Resort in Kihei. It had a beautiful view of the beach. It was a one bedroom, so my mom slept in the bedroom and I slept on the pullout couch. And newsflash, waves never stop. So if you're a light sleeper, I suggest bringing earplugs because you're going to hear the waves. But even earplugs won't block out all the noise because I really enjoyed being woken up at 6.30 in the morning by kids running on the beach screaming. Sugar Beach is in the Kihei area. On my last visit to Maui, my coworker was nice enough to let me stay at his condo in Puamana. Normally, these can run from $400 to $600 a night, so I was obviously very appreciative. This is a gated community, and they can be booked at vacation-maui.com. Be aware that there are some restrictions for Airbnb on Oahu. Nearly all of the beaches in Hawaii are public, but if you end up in front of somebody's house, just be respectful of the area. One of Maui's most popular beaches is at McKenna State Park. There are some food trucks along the way if you want to stop for something to eat. There are actually two beaches. One is called Big Beach. And the other is clothing optional, and it's called Little Beach, although I call it Little <laughs> Beach. Just use your GPS for McKenna State Park and make a right into this parking lot. In the past, I never had to pay at this beach. So during my most recent visit, I saw a sign saying I had to pay $10. $10 fee? Oops. <laughs> Lots of speed bumps. Oh, I never saw that pay here sign. There's one big path to get to both beaches. Be warned that Big Beach is known for its big waves, so it can get pretty rough. There is a lifeguard at this beach. To get to the other side, which is clothing optional, just bear to your right. To get to Little Beach, you have to climb over a rock formation, which I've nicknamed Mount Phallus, because on the other side it's full of so just keep walking along this rock formation until you see the entrance. These rocks are very sharp and can be dangerous, so be careful. I believe this gate was added in 2021. On Sundays, Little Beach is known for having some drum circles, and apparently they got out of hand, so they installed this gate. I needed to strategically place my knees to block out some nudity here. High knees to block out high knees. The water here is more calm compared to Big Beach. So if you don't mind seeing some privates in public, then go over to this beach and check it out. Yes, I wear a bathing suit. I'm the type of person who... Doesn't get nude at the nude beach. Clown. As you leave Little Beach to go back toward Big Beach, it's a very nice view. Just make sure you put your drawers back on.
I've never gone swimming in this area on the right, but I have taken some pictures. There are a few trees that are good for some pictures. One day I was just driving around near the airport and I guess I ended up on Stable Road and I went to this beach called Vore Beach. The water was kind of rough, but it was a nice view. It's right near the airport and there were a few planes taking off right overhead. The nearest address I could find was for Thai Farm Fresh, so just go in that area and you'll find Stable Road. This is near Sugar Beach in Kihei, and obviously, as you can see, I had the water mostly to myself. Along Kihei Road, there's a lot of places that you can just pull over and go on the beach. One of the greatest things about Hawaii are the sunsets, and Kihei has some beautiful ones. Puamana is a gated community on the west side of Maui, just south of Lahaina. The beach at Puamana had quite a few rocks, so I wouldn't recommend it for swimming. But it was decent for relaxing and watching a sunset. At Kanapali Beach, there's a rock formation on the right side called Black Rock that people climb up and then jump off into the water. If you swim out and then climb up the rocks, the rocks are very sharp, so be careful. When I got to the top of the rock, I kind of second-guessed my decision to do it because it was more frightening and higher up than I had anticipated. And as I was waiting and deciding if I was going to do it, I saw some nine-year-old girl coming up behind me, and I thought, well, if she's going to do it, then I have to do it, so I jumped. Since you're on vacation in a tropical location, you obviously want to get some awesome pictures. So I suggest the Face app, Face Editor, to make you look better than you actually do in real life. This app is good for editing photos, which you can then upload to social media, and your relatives will make comments like, that looks nothing like you, and then you can block them. Unfortunately, it didn't get rid of my moobs, or my forehead wrinkles, or my big butt, or my neck hair. For breakfast, I've been to Kihei Cafe a few times and it was decent. Usually there could be a line of 10 to 15 people ahead of you. On my most recent trip, I tried out Gazebo Restaurant, which is located inside the Napili Shores condo complex. Once you pull in, you're going to want to bear right. There are signs pointing in the direction. But you have to be careful because there are condos here, and you're not allowed to park in a residence spot. The entrance to the restaurant is in the back right, so you're going to want to park in a spot in this area. Some of the parking spots are marked for the restaurant. Just follow the signs along this path. Make a left at the A. If you place a to-go order, you're going to make a right here and go to the back of the restaurant and say you're there for a pickup. If you want to sit down, you'll bear left, but they apparently always have a long line. I called ahead and ordered and was kind of confused where to go, so I went through the pool area and then back around. This morning it had rained, but it's a beautiful view. Go along that path for pickup orders. I sat at one of these benches to eat. Somebody suggested that I get the macadamia nut pancakes with coconut syrup, and I agree that it is very good. Another morning for breakfast, I tried Colleen's at the cannery. You pull into this parking lot and it's on the right. It had a nice atmosphere inside. And the portobello mushroom omelet was very good. If you like Thai food, I tried Mai Thai Maui. It's located near the airport and their red curry with shrimp was good. 
There's another restaurant called Thailand Cuisine that has two locations. One is near the airport and the other one is in Kihei. One of my favorite things is to see either the sun or the moon reflecting on the water. So previously, I enjoyed going to Bubba Gump's in Lahaina at lunchtime, but they closed during quarantine, so the best thing I could find was Cheeseburger in Paradise. But I went at night and couldn't see anything. <laughs> but I imagine at lunchtime it would be a nice place. I got the Cheeseburger Island style. It wasn't that good until I turned it over and I got more of the pineapple taste. I would say it was decent, but not that great for 30 bucks, to be honest. For dinner one night, I went to Kimo's in Lahaina. It had an absolutely beautiful sunset view, although I was alone and I had to sit at the bar looking at the TV, so that was fun. As a complimentary appetizer, they gave me this carrot muffin with butter and chunks of salt. This was amazing. I'd hardly ever say that about food, but I really wanted to ask for another one of these, but I was full from the rest of my meal. I highly recommend getting this. My main dish was fish baked Kimo style. The portions weren't that big and it tasted decent, but... Honestly, I hate paying $30 for food. That's why you'll see me in the drive-thru at Kentucky Fried Chicken yelling at chickens. It was my first time trying a hula pie, and it was very good. From Eskimo Candy, I got the South Maui seafood pasta, as well as a cup of seafood chowder. It was a large portion at a decent price, and I would suggest it. However, there wasn't much seating outside or inside, so I ate in my car. God, I sound pathetic. I tried Prison Street Pizza, and they need to go to jail because it was so basic. I don't like to diss companies, but I have to be honest, this pizza was really not that great. Having said that, I did eat almost the entire thing, so it wasn't that bad, I guess. Oh. My. God. Becky. Is that what Tin looks like? Tin Roof is located in a little mall. They do not have seating inside, so it's to-go only. I had never tried pork belly, and this was a decent meal at a decent price. There is a food truck park across from Costco. I've never been there, but you may want to check it out. One of the most well-known and highly recommended restaurants on Maui is Mama's Fish House. It's very expensive and very hard to get into. Apparently it has a beautiful view at sunset. I've never been there, and frankly, I probably never will. Currently, reservations are three to six months out, so plan ahead. If you are lucky enough to get a reservation, make sure you look for the owner, Joe. When I'm not buying my uncle a year supply of alcohol and then organizing it in his bedroom while he watches his Christmas light covered TV, I really enjoy going to the Maui Humane Society. They have a building that has cats that you can go pet for free. It's kind of in between the area when you're going from Kihei back to the airport or Wailuku. It's nice to just pet some cats who are lonely. That's the main entrance over there, and I usually just drop a $20 bill in their donation jar on the way back to this cat building. Over there is where they keep the dogs. They have a few other kind of animals, including a turtle that walks around. One of the dogs just stole a car. The Humane Society has a program called Beach Buddies. A few years ago, I tried to sign up for it, but they were totally booked. It just so happened that when I went to pet some cats, they said that there was an opening for someone to take a pit bull to the beach. Sign me up. Instead of the usual few hours, I only had about 45 minutes to take the dog out. And as you can see, this dog was so over me. Probably because I kept giving him the side eye that he wouldn't poop in the backseat of my rental car. And scene. I haven't done much snorkeling in my life, but it was really cool. 
Molokini is the most popular location, but I've tried to go twice. And you have to get to the harbor around 7 a.m. or earlier. And both times they said that the waves in the ocean were too rough to get out to Molokini. So the boat diverted to another area known, I believe, as Turtle Town. And there was a beautiful rainbow on the way. On our way back, we saw a bunch of spinner dolphins. And a few of them would jump up in the air and spin around. Calm down, lady. In 2018, my uncle wanted to go on a helicopter trip. It cost about $250 for each ticket to go on a 60-minute tour along West Maui and Molokai. I uploaded a separate video of the 20-minute highlights. With about 15 minutes left in the tour, I was ready to hurl, so you may want to take a drive of me watching these highlights. One of the most famous activities on Maui is going up Mount Haleakala. The sunrise is more popular than the sunset, but you have to wake up at like 2 to 3 a.m. and ain't nobody got time for that. I believe you have to register for the sunrise only and not the sunset, and there is a $1 charge for the sunrise visit. They only allow a certain number of cars to go up. I saw some cows on the way up. It's a lot colder up top, even in the afternoon, so make sure you bring extra clothing. Don't come straight from Little Beach. I had trouble finding a parking spot, so make sure you give yourself plenty of time because you don't want to get there after the sunset. I have to keep it real. I thought this was a waste of my time. I mean, it's a beautiful view, but it just was not worth the three hours to get up and down. People say that in the morning it's more beautiful with the sunrise over the clouds, so decide on your own. Only one time have I driven around the north side of the island of Maui. It's a one-lane road that is very narrow and very dangerous. You must be careful if you decide to take that trip. Although it was interesting to see the north side of the island, if you're pressed for time, I would say don't waste it going up north and looking at this blowhole. Just turn on Fox News. It leads to a blowhole which has water come up when there's a big wave. Sorry that I have so many selfies, I'm ridiculous. There is a warning sign to say not to go past that point. There have been people who have gone near the blowhole and when it comes back down, they have gotten sucked down underneath it and died, so be careful. As you come back down from the north, Honolulu Bay is a pretty area that is known for its snorkeling, but I believe somebody got bit by a shark there recently too. I'm such a Debbie Downer. Another one of the most popular activities is the road to Hana. Most people consider this an all-day trip. It has lots of stops along the way. A few of the stops have swimming with waterfalls, which I wanted to do. But as you can see, when it rains, it gets very dangerous. So after I saw how much water there was and how dangerous it was, I decided not to do the road to Hana. Be careful where you park on Hana Highway because they have recently increased their fines. Luau's are obviously a popular thing to do. I went to one a few years ago. At the time, I think it was $125, which to me was way overpriced. It included a show and buffet, but the food wasn't that great. The show was somewhat interesting, but then it got boring. I guess I would recommend it to people to do it at least once, but this can get pretty expensive for families. And I would suggest spending your money elsewhere unless you really want to see one of these. The Io Valley are some mountains located just a few minutes north of Wailuku. It was an interesting area, but I only stayed there for about 20 minutes to avoid my cranky uncle. I believe there is a trail that you can walk on. In Lahaina, there's one of the biggest trees you'll ever see. I don't know that it's worth going there just for that, but if you're in the Lahaina area, definitely check it out. At night, they turn on some lights so you can see the homeless people. On my most recent trip, I went for a drive to an area that I had never been to, and I came upon the Waihee Ridge Trail, so I decided to go on a walk to avoid my cranky uncle. To get on the trail, you need to squeeze through this little area here. There are a few warning signs and saying that the hours are 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. They suggest that you scrape your shoes before and after. I was wearing some older sneakers that had soles that were kind of worn out. Parts of the trail were a little bit wet, so my sneakers did slip a few times. I had no idea what I was getting into. Here we go. Probably going to regret this. 
I started regretting this about 100 feet ago. This is what I look like after 10 minutes. This is what I look like after 13 minutes. 15 minutes. So this is after 18 minutes from the parking lot up to the scenic overlook area. Was it worth it? Um, I would say, yeah, I mean, I survived and I mean, these views are beautiful. So I would suggest you do it, but probably not with little kids. How lucky am I to be able to stand here and see such a beautiful scenery. So after the scenic overlook, the trail goes up further, but honestly, I'm not, oh my God, it goes all the way up there. Forget that. I'd say it's probably not worth the energy. <laughs> I feel like Little Red Riding Ho going through the woods. I love when people trip and fall. When I was younger, I had two goats who I really enjoyed spending time with. So I checked out the surfing goat dairy. I went there after I had breakfast at Colleen's at the cannery. Be aware that you do need to make reservations ahead of time. It was my first time in this area of Maui and it was a beautiful view, but I did come across a guy on a bicycle, so be careful that there are people on the road who are not in cars. I don't want to give away everything from this experience for people who decide to go. We were able to pet and feed some of them. That's a joke. They sold some food, including goat cheese cheesecake, which apparently some people ordered ahead of time. I did not try it. If you're into astronomy and the stars, the Hyatt Regency near Kanapali has a program where you can go up on the roof and look through a telescope. I did this a few years ago and I do recommend it if you're into that kind of thing. During the winter months, Maui is known for its whale watching. I've never done it, but there's a lot of information online if you want to look into it. When you're planning a trip, you obviously want to know about how much it's going to cost. So I'm going to share with you the cost of my most recent trip. I spent five days on Oahu and three days on Maui. I did get a discount on my flights because I had about $300 in vouchers. Also, like I said, I didn't have to pay for any lodging other than a $100 gift card I gave to my coworker. The eight day total came to a little over $1,600. If I had to pay for a full round trip fare and lodging, this could have been three to $4,000. Nobody likes when it rains on their vacation, but Hawaii has the most incredible rainbows I've ever seen.